The all new GNOME 49 is finally here and this update is packed with some of the boldest, biggest changes we have seen in years. We are talking a massive app refresh where GNOME 49 is ripping out many of the long-standing default apps and swapping them with a modern batch of GTK4 Libadweta apps. This version also makes the big and controversial move to a Wayland-only desktop. There's also a super functional new lock screen with interactive controls and a ton of quality of life improvements that just make the new GNOME that much better. I've been playing with GNOME 49 for some time now and it feels like GNOME is stepping into a whole new phase and it's facing the future. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's jump right in. Alright, GNOME 49 is bringing a massive app refresh and this is a huge deal. We are talking about swapping out several of its long-standing default applications for brand new modern successors. In the last couple of GNOME releases, we saw Lupe take over as the image viewer and the mighty Texas as the new default terminal. This modernization work continues with GNOME 49 and is the highlight of the GNOME 49 release. First off, let's say goodbye to Totem or the GNOME video player or the GNOME videos because it's being swapped out for a brand new modern app called Showtime. This is created with GTK4 and Lib Advaita and it fits perfectly with the stunning new look of GNOME 49 desktop. We are talking about visual consistency, slick animations and the whole package. It also uses newer media technologies under the hood. Showtime gives you this super clean contemporary interface. I really love the overlay UI here that pops up on hover and then just fades away during playback. So there are zero distractions. And this frameless window, I absolutely love the way it looks. If this is not modern, then I don't know what is. And it's not just about the looks. Showtime Video Player also has a very good support for video chapters, really good integrated subtitle handling and even variable speed playback controls. Videos with multiple audio tracks are handled like a champ here. Totem or GNOME videos was great, it worked absolutely fine. But I found myself using the VLC media player most of the time. But Showtime, I just love the way it looks and I think I am going to be using it right now. I can't wrap my head around this frameless window design, I mean just look at it. Get ready to say goodbye to another long time GNOME staple, the classic document weaver Evans. It's being swapped out in GNOME 49 for its sleek modern replacement Papers. Now Papers isn't just a new coat of paint, it's a foundational overhaul. While it started as a fork of events, it has been substantially rewritten in Rust. It's also built from the ground up with GTK4 and Libadweta, so it looks absolutely gorgeous and fits in perfectly with the rest of the modern GNOME desktop. The rewrite in Rust also means Papers is snappier, starts up faster and handles massive PDF files without breaking a sweat. You get all the features we are used to in Evans, plus some cool new additions like the much improved UI for creating and editing annotations. We'll see this listed as the document viewer in the app grid. This is a fantastic update. It's faster, more secure and the perfect example of GNOME pushing its desktop experience to the next level. Next up, GNOME 49 is turning the lock screen into a more functional and interactive part of your desktop. This is cool. The biggest new addition is the media controller widget. If you got music or video playing, a new widget will pop up letting you play, pause and skip tracks right from the lock screen without having to log back in. This is super convenient and it only appears when you need it. You can now also get shutdown and restart buttons directly on the lock screen. Now this isn't turned on by default so you'll have to enable it yourself from the settings. This is a fantastic option to have for quick access when you need to power down or reboot in a hurry. And to top it all off, the entire lock screen gets a nice new blur theme which contributes to its sleek modern look. We all already know that the Wayland display server is the future, not just on the GNOME desktop but on other desktop environments as well. And with this version, the classic GNOME on Xorg session is officially gone. From now on, GNOME Shell is a Wayland only desktop. Now the plan was to rip out X11 support from the login screen GDM entirely. But in a last minute plot twist, the developers realized this would break the ability to launch other popular desktops like Cinnamon and Mate. So to keep it pragmatic, they have re-enabled the X11 switch in the login manager. But that's only for now. Let me be clear. Gnome Shell itself is 100% Wayland only now. But this temporarily fixed the rest of the Linux ecosystem happy. So why the big push even when there are many Linux apps that use X11 only? Because the old X11 is considered legacy tech with known security holes. Wayland is built for the modern era. It's more secure, it natively handles things like fractional scaling, mixed refresh rate monitors and adds slick touchpad gestures without any clunky workaround apps. 
and GNOME 49 really brings these benefits. Animations are about really smooth, that annoying cursor lag that you get with variable refresh rate, yeah, that's one. A huge win for gamers. Fonts on high DPI screens look way sharper and your mouse now glides seamlessly across multi-monitor setups without hitting that invisible wall. Now don't worry, your old Excellent apps still work thanks to x -Wayland. And while some people, especially on NVIDIA, might feel that this is a bit premature, for most users the Wayland experience in GNOME is absolutely ready for prime time. This is a really bold step. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. Okay, next on the list, the file managing GNOME 49 files or Nautilus as us old schoolers still call it, is getting a ton of love. First off, the search experience has been completely redesigned. You now get a modern popper with clean bullet style filters and even a cool calendar widget to easily filter your searches by date. Files also gives you some neat visual cues now. Hidden files are semi-transparent, making them easy to spot. And when you cut a file with Ctrl X, its icon gets a dashed border so you know exactly what's going on. But that's not all. There are a ton of smaller tweaks that add up to a huge improvement. Browsing your Android phone files with MTP is way faster now. You can copy network paths right from the sidebar. And for the terminal junkies among us, there's a new Ctrl plus period shortcut to instantly open your current folder in the terminal. Now this one is an absolute game changer and really useful. I personally absolutely appreciate this. Yeah, none of these updates are earth shattering on their own, but together they make for a much more fluid and convenient experience. It's all about making your day-to-day -day file management faster and more intuitive. GNOME 49 is continuing to polish the desktop experience and there have been some changes in the quick settings menu here. The Do Not Disturb toggle has been moved right into the main quick settings menu. It was previously tucked away in the notifications drop down. But now it's right where you expect it, making it super easy to silence notifications in a pinch. The whole quick settings menu also feels a lot sleeker with smoother animations and transitions that give it a more polished and responsive feel. Screenshot and screen recording notifications are now nicely grouped together to reduce clutter. Yeah, the quick settings menu is just a little bit better now. If you're rocking a multi-monitor setup, you know it can be a hassle at times. But GNOME 49 is bringing some serious, awesome upgrades that make using multiple screens a genuine pleasure. The first one is per monitor brightness controls. Yeah, you can now finally adjust the brightness of each of your screens independently right from the quick settings menu. No more one size fits all brightness. This was actually a huge rework under the hood and it's a massive quality of life win. They actually had to completely rewrite how GNOME desktop handles backlights. Next up, GNOME 49 brings a critical fix for variable refresh rate. You know that annoying cursor lag that you get when your game's frame rate drops? That's completely gone. Now your mouse cursor will stay buttery smooth at your monitor's max refresh rate even if the game itself stutters. While VRR is still in the experimental phase, this fix is still a huge deal for responsiveness. And it gets better. Thanks to the pointer warp protocol, your mouse will now move seamlessly across your monitors without hitting that invisible wall at the edge. It just glides from one screen to the next, which is fantastic for smooth productivity. So yeah, people using multiple screens are going to enjoy using GNOME more now. It's going to be a phenomenal experience. The GNOME Calendar app is getting a refresh in GNOME 49 with a focus on making it more flexible, readable and user-friendly. The adaptive UI here has been touched up. While the app did adapt to the layout of the window size previously, now there's a new toggleable sidebar that can be hidden away or shown by your preference. Events are now much easier to read at a glance thanks to the improved color contrast. And in a super useful addition for power users, you can now export your events to .ics files, making it easy to share your schedule with others. These are some little but very useful updates to the calendar app to speed it up with the rest of the modern GNOME desktop. A new GNOME release means new wallpapers, and GNOME 49 is delivering with a fresh, gorgeous new look for your desktop. You're getting a few new options including a beautiful dark mode wallpaper and another one with sleek texture gradient that gives your desktop a very modern feel. 
But it's not just about the design. Under the hood, GNOME's window manager Mutter now supports 10, 12 and 16 bit wallpapers. This means you are getting richer, more accurate colors with zero banding, allowing the new designs to really pop. The whole wallpaper system has been modernized with Rust code for better performance. GNOME's own web browser, Web, also known as Epiphany, is getting some love in GNOME 49. The built-in ad blocker has been announced to be even more effective and the address bar has gone through a redesign. It now smartly suggests URLs as you type and there's also a handy mute button when a site starts blasting audio. There are some great new features for power users too. The clean and simple reader mode now shows the estimated reading time which is a cool little touch. And on the security front, web now has built-in support for hardware security keys like YubiKeys letting you log into sites with top tier security. With the new password manager, better bookmark editing and improved on-page search, GNOME Web is really stepping up its game. So is it good enough for me to switch to it? Thanks, but no thanks, I will stick with Firefox. Well, there you have it guys. GNOME 49 is a seriously impressive release. This is a big shift from the massive app refresh to the bold future focus leap to a Wayland only shell. This update delivers a faster, sleeker and more cohesive experience across the board. Alright, if you found this video useful, if you enjoyed it, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also give me a big thumbs up. Which new feature in GNOME 49 are you most excited about? Is it the new Showtime video player like me or the huge multi-monitor improvements? Tell me using the comment section below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux Lake Pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out the top 15 hottest hacks that will supercharge your Linux desktop's performance to the next level and truly unlock your Linux. It's got some really cool tweaks, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out. <laughs>